Affairs of Indonesia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, many leaders have spoken here over the past few days. We share the same concern. The current state of our world is very worrying. The pandemic persists and global economy remains sluggish. War among nations is no longer a possibility but has become a reality. Violation of international law has become a norm in pursuit of narrow self-interest. Crisis after crisis is unfolding around the world. Climate change, rising inflation, food and energy shortages. Mr. President, history teaches us this phenomena might lead to a huge war. Let us look at the period leading up to Second World War, the Great Depression, rise of ultranationalism, competition over resources, and rivalry between major powers. These are very similar to what we are facing today. Clearly, we have been handling these challenges the wrong way. We have been divided instead of united. We have been working individually instead of collectively. We have been focusing on words instead of deeds. The question now, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to continue the same path? Or are we going to choose a different path? If we continue the same path, we will be heading toward a disaster. But if we choose a different path, we must stand a chance. So today, I would like to offer you a world based on a new paradigm, a paradigm of win-win, not zero-sum, a paradigm of engagement, not of containment, a paradigm of collaboration, not of competition. This is the transformative solution that we need. Mr. President, allow me to share you why we need this new paradigm. First, to reignite the spirit of peace. Trust deficit breeds hatred and fear and may lead into a conflict. We witness this phenomena in many parts of the world. We must turn trust deficit into strategic trust. And it starts with upholding respect for international law. The fundamental principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity are non-negotiable. I repeat, the fundamental principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity are non-negotiable. This principle must always be upheld. Meanwhile, peaceful solution is the only option to settle any conflicts. Habit of dialogue and cooperation would nurture strategic trust. These are the rules of the game that we must maintain if we truly want peace. It is our responsibility to apply them consistently, not selectively or only when we see fit. My president confide these messages of peace in his visit to Kiev and Moscow last June. We must also apply this new paradigm to make a breakthrough in Palestine and Afghanistan. For far too long, the people in Palestine have suffered and longed for peace. Until Palestine can truly become an independent state, Indonesia will stand firm in solidarity with our Palestinian brothers and sisters. People in Afghanistan also deserve a peaceful and prosperous life where rights of all peoples, including women, are equally respected and 
where access to education for women and girls is granted. Without this new paradigm, peace would remain an elusive dream. Second, revive our responsibility for global recovery. We are concerned that global solidarity is fading away, whereas injustice and selfishness abound. The weak stand small and the mighty takes all. We are seeing the symptoms every day. Trade discrimination is running rampant. Monopoly and global supply chain persist. Global economic governance is used to justify the rules of the strong. The pandemic teaches us a valuable lesson that no one is safe until everyone is. This lesson shapes the priorities of Indonesia G20 presidency. The whole world is pinning their hope on G20 to be catalysts of global economic recovery, especially for developing countries. G20 must not fail. We cannot let global recovery fall at the mercy of geopolitics. We must act urgently to address food and energy crisis and prevent a fertilizer crisis from happening. Otherwise, billions more people will be at risk, particularly again in developing countries. We also need a new paradigm as we move beyond the recovery. A new paradigm would instill a collective responsibility to attend the, G the 2030 Agenda and fight climate change. Without this new paradigm, there would not be a strong recovery for all, and many of us would be left behind. Third, to bolster regional partnership. Mr. President, in many places, post-war regional architect was built as a tool for containment and alienation. This phenomenon continues today with minilateral groupings. Many become part of a proxy war between major powers. This is not what regional architecture should be. It must serve as the building block for peace and stability, rather than undermining them. ASEAN was built exactly for this purpose. We refuse to be a pawn in a new Cold War. Instead, we actively promote the paradigm of collaboration with all countries. This paradigm will also guide Indonesia chairmanship in ASEAN next year. It is the commitment of Indonesia to forge ASEAN centrality in shaping regional order in the Indo-Pacific, to reinforce ASEAN unity as a locomotive for peace, stability, and prosperity in the region, and to ensure ASEAN matters for our peoples, for the region, and for the world. ASEAN will also continue to address seriously the situation in Myanmar. Indonesia is deeply concerned by the military junta's lack of commitment to implement, to implement the five points of consensus. ASEAN must move forward and not be taken hostage by the situation in Myanmar. The support of the international community, in particular the neighboring countries of Myanmar, is very important to bring back democracy in Myanmar. On Pacific, Indonesia will continue to strengthen our cooperation with the Pacific countries. We will work together to address our shared challenges, including on climate change. As a Pacific nation ourselves, we want to see the Pacific as an integral part of peaceful, stable, and prosperous Indo-Pacific. Mr. President, 
the new paradigm of collaboration must be the spirit of the UN. Inclusive, meaningful engagement must trump above take it or leave it approach. Whereas the voices of all countries, big and small, develop and developing, equally matter. This is the very foundation of multilateralism. That is why we need a strong and reformed UN. That is why we need a renewed multilateralism that is fit for purpose and that is fit for its time. That is why we need a multilateralism that delivers. I repeat, we need a multilateralism that delivers. I believe by working together and adopting a new paradigm, we can create a better world for all. It is no longer time to talk the talk. Now is the time to walk the talk. I thank you very much.